we have the artists behind this wonderful film uh, to join us on stage to talk a little bit about uh, the film. We're going to need a few more chairs, but we have Shai Bensur. We have Mr. Johnny Greenwood. We have Mr. Natulal Salanki. And we also have musicians Zakir, Zaki, and Amir. Yeah. Thank you. We have chairs coming on the way. We'll get chairs for the rest of you. Thank you. Please have a seat. Go ahead, I'll sit here. Um, remarkable film, and I'd never seen it before with real cinema sound. Uh, I'd seen it before just at home, but the, the, the soundscape of the film, the way the music really just permeates the whole place was fantastic. So thank you. Uh, we got everyone seated? Great. Um, I want to begin by asking you all as musicians to, if you could, for us, just tease out the different musical threads. There's so much going on in this music. Um, many, uh, a number of different kinds of music from India. Ah, yeah. we, we have a chair coming as well. <laughs> Thank you. You want to introduce her? Uh, we have a number of different kinds of Indian music, including Kavali, the, the Sufi um, uh, traditional music. We have Indian brass bands. We've got Western rock. We've got Hebrew singing as well. Um, can you tease out all of the different elements that went into this music, and, and what do you call it? Hello. Uh, hi. Um, actually, I think basically a lot of the, the music in, in the project is mainly... Uh, is. Uh, even though it's original music, it is corresponding and is rooted very much within North Indian music. Mm -hmm. So if I would have to name it, I think it is closest to North Indian music, but some sort of a takeoff on it or a interpretation of it in a different way. Yeah, I think to uh, Western audiences, what's interesting is that um, Zaki and Zakir, these wonderful koal singers, mm -hmm. they would never normally play with a brass band. But was this the first time they, that kind of music's done together? And the brass bands just traditionally play in weddings and play in the streets. It's just a, it's a very different culture. Mm -hmm. so and the brass instruments came from the British colonial period, is that, is that correct? That's right. I mean, it's, it's, it was so bizarre for me to hear this um, because... It's it's like they they invented their own form of jazz in isolation, and when when we met Amir Khan, told him how amazing he is, and asked him, you know, what he thinks of, you know, whoever Lee Morgan or he's ha or or you know, hadn't even heard of Mars Davis. It's just it's just bizarre to us, um, and yet because the Indian tradition is all about improvising within certain scales called rugs, it's sort of it's got its own parallel world. It's very it's very strange. And your contribution as a, a Western musician working mainly in the, in the rock idiom, what does that add to what you were bringing to Shai and the other musicians? Yeah, it's, it's strange because with Radiohead, I'm just used to working in, uh, in a very hard, different harmonic world, which is all about chords. Mm. Um, and in Indian music, there are no chords. There are, there's no such thing as major or minor. Mm. Um, and usually when you impose chords onto Indian music, you force it, uh, it's like putting a grid onto a painting, you make it sort of slightly more brutal than it is. Mm. You know, it's all, it's very strange, like even in some rugs, you, you're allowed to move the fifth of the scale, the dominant, which is, which is in, in Western music, it's all about the, the, the tonic and the dominant and the tension between it. And so the idea that you can have a scale where even the fifth is slightly pushed into microtones is, is, is very peculiar. Um, but yeah, it's fascinating. Mm. Did you play differently as a result? Well, yeah, because I just turned up and heard these drummers, mm -hmm. and thought this is like um, the JBs. This <laughs> is like a this is a funk thing. So yeah. um, it's just all about the bass line and and just. But I just 
thought of myself as being one of the drummers, really, mm. um, and was just very wary of, like I say, Im imposing too many chords mm. on it. Um, Mr. Solanke, I wanted to, to ask you, you have been named widely as India's best drummer. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, where does the rhythm that you were trained in fit within what Shai and Johnny and the other musicians were doing? Thank you so much to everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much to your love, our music, like and respect. Music is a God, music is a life, music is a medicine. In the music, the rhythm is a mother. I'm so happy to meet them. And the rhythm play the instrument is a, I play, this is called Nagara. It's a traditional instrument from the temple. We are never played like this kind of stage. Thank you for Shai. Thank you for Johnny. And I say in the movie, like 24 hours. This is the wrong. <laughs> when I see the Johnny, then I care 26 hours. I see in my eyes. Why? You listen. I see in my eyes when the people want to see Radiohead. The 25, 26 hours before on the queue. <laughs> this is the true. Yeah? Somebody who is the queue always? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the true. Thank you so much, Shai. And we, this project is a no Hindu, no Muslim. We are all the musicians play in the temple, play in the road of the wedding, and they respect us. And they give us to good work, good name of the instrument, not for us. So we are very proud of play with them. Thank you. I, I want to ask a little bit more about the collaboration. Did you start with ground rules in terms of what the framework of your music would sound like? And did you have an end point in terms of someplace you were trying to reach as you were playing? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I came into this quite wary of how so-called world music is recorded and treated. It's usually done. Um, Westerners seem to go to India and, and do something quite antiseptic and cautious and and and, and um, very carefully recorded. And the whole point of this music is that it's all quite sort of passionate and brash and it's, and so we want to record it in that way. I remember one session when Zaki and Zakir were standing up holding microphones like this that were going into big um, uh, speakers through echo boxes, it was like, it was a bit sort of, it was like they were doing some sort of, um, you know, it was a little bit, what's that film? Oh, it was a bit Eight Mile, frankly. Oh, okay. Eight Mile, <laughs> really? Yeah, just a little bit. It's kind of amazing. They were sort of... Losing where, themselves. Whereas, you know, traditionally, um, Westerners would go and record in India and just take the best microphones and make sure everything was just crystal clear. And, and that just always feels like a, a bit of a dilution to me. I don't know what you think. I'm kind of telling you this. Uh, I'm, I'm learning now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, uh, as far as the collaboration, if uh, you ask about the, the lines drawn, um, what I, I, I felt very inspired by is the fact that okay, some the compositions were made before we went into the fort, and then we were sitting and trying to figure out ideas of of how to uh, bring them about. And a lot of the things that I feel from that, uh, that journey that is, is actually brought into it was, see, I've, I've spent most of my adult life in India and somehow I feel, I see the things and for me things are, the Indian music sounds a very natural, natural way to listen to music and suddenly Johnny came from few steps outside and he was going, wow, these elements that for me, I didn't even realize they, some of them that are actually there, it was just normal. Said, wow, these are great and we should put more weightage on these ones. And as Johnny was saying, when you collaborate with Western musicians or Western music a lot of time, you always try to connect between the two opposite worlds. The one world which aesthetics are based on uh, harmonies and chord progressions and another world of Indian music, which aesthetics are mostly based within the movement in the scales. And these are two completely different, uh, two completely different universes in a way, because as soon as you 
give a harmonious movement into something, you change the entire perspective and a feeling. Uh, and it's always very tempting to think, okay, we want to connect with the two words, let's put this and this mm. together. And then when Johnny said, no, we should keep it this way, we should keep, keep it in the more within the North Indian music system way, but we will add chords very in a very uh, cautious way mm. and different rhythm patterns. And then when he brought these sorts of thinking, I think all of us were very surprised. Even now, Natu and Ajmeri, when we're playing the rhythm in Junoon and Johnny is giving this guitar bass riff that is in 5-8, it's kind of musical terms a little bit, but it is somehow very complicated for me to, to listen to that and not really think about these things. So when he plays this rhythm of uh, five on that uh, kerva, it's that sort of an eight rhythm, uh, it's, it's been very strange for all of us to listen to it. It's not something we are used to. It's not contradicting Indian mm. music, but how it's also not being used in it. How so do you know when something new like that works? We smile. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good, good. Um, I want to ask you about the collaborator who's not here, Paul Thomas Anderson. Johnny, of course, you've worked with him on many soundtracks for his films. And I wonder um, what, you, what um, has changed in your own music and in, in your film work and in the work that you did here in Junoon and what his influence has been in, in, in your music and also what his role was as a collaborator here. How did he contribute to the Junoon project? Um. How did he contribute to this? I mean, it was amazing, really. He just sort of... It, what's, what's really impressed me, all of us, from the film is how he managed to put a structure to it together mm. and make a film out of it that, that really accurately recorded. That's exactly how it was. I mean, he's got the feel of being in the Indian streets. He's got the feel of what it was like to be in that room and recording. Um, those two uh, singers turning up, and her wearing her shades and looking like... You know, looking, they, they were just—they were amazing. It was just—it was, was a really, um, yeah, it was—it was really uh, just such a memorable time of our life. We all talk about it the whole time, and we're talking, trying to do another one, and working out how it can be. You know, we can do another version of it because it was such a you know big deal for all of us. And Shai, you were uh, recording in the Maharaja's fort in Rajasthan. Is that correct? Yeah, this is what we see in the film, is the Meherangar Fort uh, in Jodhpur, which is still owned by the um, Maharaja of Jodhpur himself. I understand he's a fan of yours? I wouldn't call him a fan. <laughs> 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 I, I hope I could say a friend. Okay. Uh, anyway. oh. He's someone that, that's su completely supporting all the local musicians. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's his, he's, he's famous for funding and teaching and helping keep all these traditions alive so yeah that's certainly his it that that is another thing which is amazing the way that music evolved in india and still to this day you can see it uh, and and somehow maybe in in some of the places you'd see that it's disappearing which is 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 kind of a painful uh, process but with the new financial systems of you know basically capitalism the way that the, the modern world works um, but I historically, music in India was basically it started, and I'm talk I'm saying music in India. It's a very general term, and maybe I'll take two minutes just to say it. I always feel very strange to talk about Indian music as a one thing when India is a subcontinent where music has been evolved for centuries, maybe thousands of years. If we are talking about the Veds, uh, the early time. Uh, so music has been evolved periodically and at the same time geographically in a completely different manner. So uh, saying Indian music is almost like saying Western music and then in Western music we would include uh, Italy and Germany and Britain and North America and throughout the last 2,000 years or mm -hmm. so. So that we would know it doesn't really make sense. So wh when we are talking about Indian music, we are talking about uh, the, the rough division would be South Indian music, Carnatic music, and then North Indian music, and Bollywood music, which is kind of cinematic pop. Uh, within North Indian music, we have the classical, the Shastra Sangeet, the, the music that is based of rags and the classical music, more refined. And then the 
folk music, which has within it the devotional music aspects and the musical genres. Uh, we are dealing in this project with music from Rajasthan, which folk music uh, in North India, and Kawali, Kawali, the Sufi music that is also related to North India. These are Sufis are mystics of Islam, and there is a whole genre of music that has evolved. Uh, People might know Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. Yes. So he is uh, one of the greatest ambassadors of uh, Kawali, and the source of Kawali goes to the Sufi saint Khwaja Muinuddin Hassan Chishti, that his shrine uh, is in Ajmer, where Zaki and Zakir are coming from. Um, later you can ask them a question, and Sajda, which is uh, the better, my better half, my wife, mm. she's from Ajmer as well, she can translate in a better Urdu than mine. Mm. Um, so, so basically, when we are talking about uh, the, the way that music evolved in India, it evolved as an oral tradition within musical families. So it started in temples and in shrines, and afterwards it went into the courts of the kings, the patrons who have supported it. And the Maharaja of Jodhpur is still with that lineage, is still supporting local music and music tradition. So he's, there is a lot of, uh, there are families of musicians who are related specifically to the family of the Maharaja. Mm. So out of this respect, uh, I would guess, not just respect for us as uh, people, as human beings, but the respect for music itself, he opened his fort and invited us to create that project. And where we were playing, they were, there is a tradition of hundreds of years of people playing music in some of rooms which are acoustically made for playing music. So he was very, very generous uh, and very supportive for the cause of that. Thank you. I do want to ask uh, the uh, musicians uh, from India, uh, uh, Natulal, Zakir, Zaki, and Amir, about Western musicians coming to India. It's been happening for many, many uh, years now. And uh, some do it better than others. Uh, some are able to respect the traditions, uh, but sometimes uh, musicians from the West will get it wrong. And I wondered, as m musicians who were raised in the Indian traditions of, uh, of Rajasthan, um, how did you find Shai and Johnny to play with? What were they like as musical partners for you? Um, hello. You're asking that the Western musicians uh, India तो कुछ सीखते हैं कुछ उनको सही आइडिया होता है किसी को नहीं होता है तो उनका सवाल है कि जॉनी और शाय को एज अ म्यूजिशियन आपने कैसा पाया और उनके साथ काम करके आपको कैसा लगा जॉनी और शाय भाई का सबसे पहले शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं मैं कि इन लोगों ने हमें साथ लेकर के कुछ काम किया और इससे पहले शास्त्रीय संगीत में हम लोग गाया बजाया करते थे इसके अलावा कव्वाली जो रूहानी गज़ा है सूफियों की उसको भी गाते थे लेकिन जब शाही से मुलाकात हुई तो एक अलग अंदाज मिला गाने बजाने का First of all, they were they are very thankful to Johnny and Shai uh, to collaborate with them, and they being playing uh, as a classical musician, especially in the genre of kavali. They are specialized. They are kavals, which are the traditional musicians of this kind of genre called kavali, and they are playing in the shrines of the Sufi saints, and that's what they are coming from. दोनों से मुलाकात होने के बाद एक अलग माहौल मिला और कुछ नया जो हम लोगों ने कभी नहीं किया था तो हमें बहुत अच्छा लगा और आज तक इनकी कुछ कंपोजिशनें इनकी कुछ एक अलग अंदाज वेस्टर्न अंदाज जो है वो एक बहुत ही जिंदगी को एक अच्छे मोड़ पर ले आया uh, it's been very adventurous for them to play with both of them because uh, they used to play only the traditional 
Qawwali or, or classical music. But uh, collaborating with them, with the Western um, style of music and their compositions uh, to play with, um, it was, uh, uh, they were very honored and, and they, they, it brings th the, I would say, it's a very nice word in Hindi, <laughs> but <laughs> that they bring uh, on a very special um, stage in their life this kind of music. They really, it comes out in a very special stage in life. Chapke music ki zuban puri dunya me ki hi hai. Chahe jahan chale jahe, music puri dunya me ek hi zuban hai, uski alag alag zubane nahi hai. बस यह है तरीके अलग अलग हैं अंदाज अलग अलग है लेकिन हमें जॉनी के साथ शाही भाई के साथ बहुत अच्छा लगा इनके साथ काम करके और इनके इनका जो म्यूजिक है उसको सुनने के बाद एक अलग राह एक अलग अंदाज एक अलग चीज मालूम हुई म्यूजिक इज अ यूनिवर्सल लैंग्वेज एंड it being very honored and pleasure and excitement, excited experience to work with both of them. And they are very happy and thankful. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um, we've got just a few minutes left, but I want to uh, open the floor to you. I'm sure many of you will have questions about Junoon. Uh, so I'll just ask <laughs> you if you've got a question about Junoon or any of the musicians' contribution to it, uh, please raise your hand and we'll, uh, do we have microphones? Yep. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Let's start right here. A microphone is on its way. Hi there. Uh, thank you so much. That was a great uh, movie, and thank you so much for your answers. Uh, my question is uh, to you, Johnny. Uh, I'm just curious why and what motivated you to go to India and meet Shai and uh, began this adventure of exploring Indian music? Um, so I saw a band playing in the desert in Israel and their songs weren't great, but one of them was really good. And, I, I, and unfortunately they hadn't written it. So it was a, a kind of an awkward moment of <laughs> complimenting some musicians to something they hadn't done. It was the one song that, that Shai had written. <laughs> so that kind of led me to his songs and then we got to know Shai. And it's actually my wife's idea to, well, her persuading me to go to India and us to sort of do this, like, all in, to, to not do it in a half-hearted way. And, and Nigel was really keen. Nigel Godrich, a radio producer, he's always, you know, happy to do something adventurous. And it just suddenly all came together. Yeah. Thank you. There was another one right here. Go. I just wanted to ask, um, I guess the question is for the entire group, but how has this project been received uh, in the Indian musical community? I, d I, get the f I get the feeling the musical community is a little confused by it because <laughs> you've got sort of, you know, Sufi Muslims singing partly in Hebrew. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing in lots of ways. Um, it's, it's possibly, yeah, I don't know, world music, which is such a horrible phrase for, for any kind of music. <laughs> it's such an off-putting way to describe it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, and it's, it's religious music, obviously, but it's very passionate. I don't know. What do you think? I think it depends. India is very big. Um, it's definitely not a, it's not a Bollywood project, which makes it into being a, like one of these blockbusters uh, in that sense. But uh, on the other hand, uh, which really touches uh, my heart personally, and I think the entire group. Uh, in Ajmer, in the Darga Sharif, in the place where the holy shrine of the saint, uh, people are very, very uh, happy about that. And they, they play it, and, they, the, and the song, the poetry of Junoon, that is written by uh, Hazrat Nawab Khadim Hassan Budri Baba, which is a contemporary saint from Ajmer, so within that society, people accept the project and they are very much excited about that. And that is a great honor for us uh, to feel that this has been accepted 
uh, not only in Mumbai where we can go and play or in Delhi or in Jaipur, which we, we do, uh, but uh, in, in the shrine of uh, the traditional place itself. And that is uh, a big thing for us. We didn't have the chance to perform together with this on the stage in India besides that one single performance that you have seen which was a really also that time the Maharaja he came on stage and he was very excited about seeing all these different musical communities because within the group there are, we talked about the Kawals and Natuji as I mentioned also that he has, he's coming from another tradition from the temple playing Nagara. Um, we have that tradition of Amir who is playing brass we, we talked a little bit about this fact that the brass has migrated to India with the British and they are playing in the weddings and in the different processions in the streets. So there are different communities within Indian society that are involved in this project. So for when the Maharaja he's mentioning in that film we can see in the last line, he was very excited to see that suddenly all these communities come to, together in a project and play because this is something that and uh, maybe sounds natural for us as musicians, but somehow, I don't know why, but in socially, uh, in, in a musical way, it doesn't really happen that often. So the fact that it has been received uh, in Ajmer and in these places, it is a, a very big uh, gift for us as well. But, uh, you'll go up here. Hi. Um, I was just curious, because based on the documentary, the way it seemed is that most of the music was performed live off the floor. Is, is most music within that genre done that way? Is most music recorded like just in everyone playing together? I, I suppose so. But usually it's in a real studio with glass walls separating musicians and it's all done a bit more sort of properly. But with Radiohead, we've always we have, um, you're using that word a lot tonight, but we have the Radiohead tradition is to turn up um, and just turn a big empty house into a studio. So, um, and it's a little bit slapdash. And we even had, um, like, we needed this some, a reverb. And luckily, underneath us, there was a big empty cavern, big empty cave. So we put a speaker at one end and a microphone at the other. So every time we wanted any reverb, we had the, it was a bit like making the whole fort part of the instrument. Mm. The only problem with it is there were so many pigeons down there. <laughs> so if you, and on the record you can hear quite often screeching of birds just because they're all in the echo chamber along with like, you know, yeah, all the catering supplies and everything, but it was great. <laughs> so yeah, so nothing digital, nothing artificial. It's all, um, all organic. Okay, nice. we'll, we'll go over here. Thank you, Johnny. Mm. We'll come to you after. Hey guys, just wanted to say uh, thank you for this wonderful gift you guys given us. It was it's beautiful. Um, just a question I have is the writing process. Was it improvised? Um, Nigel's position as a producer, did he come in later on? Or how was that process? Um, the songs were written. It was just a question of tweaking some of them and changing some structures. And yeah, like I remember Resolve was changed quite a lot and became far more, um, it was like a blues thing sort of originally and then became a more about the laptop and the, I don't know, what do you remember? Mm. Um, yeah, I, th I think the fi then the final result, it was um, about finding the, the golden mm. moments of the songs and kind of confining them into a structure that would work in a recording when we were basically, and, and, and we were there for three weeks, and we were playing the songs. And sometimes we would play, you know, we were just talking about that because we saw the film from, not in the cinema, but just in the kind of a backstage uh, scenario. And we saw Amir is playing uh, that uh, composition of Modern. I completely forgot. I haven't seen the movie for a while. And I completely forgot we actually recorded it as an instrumental. Uh, and I was just, me and Johnny were talking about that when we were play all day long, which was amazing. We would just be playing all day long. And then we would like to take a break. And when we would take a break, uh, the musicians like Amir and, and, and some of the other musicians would just go to the instrument and start playing. And so it was just all the time playing. And then 
trying to find, and that's a natural, actually that's the natural environment uh, when, when you, sit, you, you sit with the musicians and, and that is something that is being done. And when I was saying that music is a, something which is within a tradition, it means people don't wake up one day and go, they decide, they said, oh, mom, I want to go to study a trumpet and go to the conservatorium and find a teacher. It's something that's being played all day long in the house, mm -hmm. in the ceremonies. So this is how it was in, in the fort. And then it was somehow we kind of succeeded to, dis to take some decisions of how long should it be, would be a track. And it was very elastic. Um, and remember uh, the structures, I guess. We've got time for just one more. We'll go back here. There's a woman who had had her hand up. I'm sorry, in the, in the blue, blue and yellow. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming out. I'm coming to uh, your radio head tomorrow, which will be kind of cool, too. Um, but um, I was just thinking, with all the instruments, I remember in high school, we used to try to learn each other's instruments in band practice. And uh, so I was wondering, did you guys check out each other's instruments and try to l learn each other's instruments while you were hanging out with each other? I'd just make a comment on it because today we were laughing so much in the in the van and we said that what would be if uh, uh, Nat would uh, g sing and Amir would play the Nagara and I would uh, play and just <laughs> like realizing that it would be a complete disaster. We never do it. <laughs> but that would um, be a true cult uh, cross culture The only one that exchange. has a chance would be Johnny, basically, I guess, <laughs> that, uh, with, the, with some of the instruments. But mostly we never really, we never do that. I don't know. Perhaps a challenge for you. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have to leave it there, unfortunately, in terms of questions. But the night's not over because we do have a musical setup back here. Johnny, I understand you will have to go, unfortunately. But the rest of musician, the musicians, Shai Bin Sur, uh, Natulal, Am um, Amir, uh, Zakir, and Zaki, will be performing for you. So thank you for this part. Thank you so much for coming, Johnny. It's a thank great you. honor to have you here. And now we will.